all right, we're drafting now the best games of 2021 now that we have the full schedule. Trying to be sensitive to our friends watching on Sky Sports. Chris, ask me the trivia question. Okay, here we go. Who was the last defending Super Bowl champion to lose their season opener? Who was it, Mike? Last defending champion to lose their season opener. Why Come, are you asking me so quick? Because I want you to mess it up and get it wrong. That's why. I'm trying to put the pressure on well, you. It wasn't last year because the Chiefs beat the Texans. The year before that, the defending champion didn't play in the opener. The year before that, who was it? It was the pa the Patriots lost to the Chiefs at some point. The Patriots. I'm just going to say the Patriots. You are correct. Was it the Chiefs game? Yes, it was. It was that the All Kareem right. Hunt, right? That he fumbled early on and then like tore them up. And after then that. had like 500 yards right. after that. Right. Okay. Uh, well, th this one's easy. Some days it doesn't matter if you have the first pick. Some days it does. Yes. This year, the best game by far. Week four, Sunday Night Football, NBC, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at New England Patriots, Tom Brady's last game ever at Gillette Stadium. And if he starts the season on the same pace he was adhering to last year, he will break the all-time career passing yardage record in New England as he will be – it will be a king's return. I, it, it will be, I think, embarrassing – how much he gets cheered. I really do, Chris. I know. It's it's interesting. I, I would think so, too. Now, there is that Boston fan base that's, like, still mad that he left the Patriots and all that. So but are I, they mad at him or are they mad at I, Bill Belichick? No, I think there's some that are mad at him. I, I, I saw that throughout the year. And, you know, not mad, but, like, you know, like, like hey, I'm a Patriots fan. I'm not going to root for the Bucks, like that kind of thing. But I, I'm with you. I would think that would be one of these weird games where they're literally making crowd noise for him not to, you know, get a first down or a touchdown, and then he throws a touchdown and they cheer just for him. <laughs> this is the last time they're going to see him in uniform in person, and it's the last time he'll be back until they retire his jersey and hang it from the rafters. I, I think they're going to give him yeah. greatest NFL player of all time. They're going to give him the respect he deserves. I really do think that it will be over the top to the point where Bill Belichick will be very anxious to go home and get under the covers. <laughs> yeah. No, I would expect that. And I think, like, really, you know, again, I, uh, Bill, I think, will be in favor of rolling out the – he might love it. Roll out the red carpet for Tom. Let's make him emotional. Let's make him think about everything other than the football game. Let's do all of that, right? There's a belief within the Patriots organization that when Tom is too emotional, that's when yes. he's not as effective right. as he needs to be. All right, what do you got? Well, I can't let you corner the market here, all right? So I'm going to go with the Packers and the Chiefs as my next one. Yes, because it's my Jordan home. Love yeah. versus Chad Henney. <laughs> right. I'm going with that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure hoping Rodgers is a starter in Green Bay there. But, uh, yeah, I, I want to see that, as we talked about earlier. I mean, to me, it, it's – I think it's Rodgers, who's you know I hold as the greatest quarterback ever. Mahomes is as talented as we've ever seen and maybe could be the greatest quarterback ever. I mean, so that's where I want to see it. We haven't seen this matchup. They have a similar magician-like style as far as how they play the position, and I think it would really be kind of a personal, like, I want to one-up you type of thing. So that, that's my first pick. Hey, and, and this next game isn't getting nearly the hype that it should. It's week five. Right, Sunday night football, Bills at the Chiefs, rematch of the AFC Championship game, uh -huh. that moment where Stephon Diggs was out there watching the Chiefs get the Lamar Hunt trophy. You know, they played in the regular season last year. It was kind of an uninspiring game. It was one of those games that got shifted around on the schedule, didn't it? Was, the, was it already scheduled for a Monday night? No, it, it was not. It, it got was moved. One of the ones that got it, moved. Was, it was an early Monday night game, and then something came and, on after it, it. It was raining, right. and it was blah. And hey, look, the. And the Chiefs have a tough schedule to start the year. I think the Bills are going to want to show that they're ready to compete with the best in the conference. And and that will be, I think, a physical, tough, hopefully exciting game. So that, to me, is one of the best ones of the year. Yeah, I, I, that would have that probably would have been my next pick if you didn't take it. I mean, come on. My homie, your homie, my homie, your homie, and giddy up, giddy up, Josh Allen. I mean, come on. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, and I don't think two team, either team is going to slip too far or, or anything like that. Right, I'm going to go a little off the radar here, not to like the traditional power uh, matchup here, but week seven, Rams-Lions. I'm a little intrigued by it. I'm going to take it now. Yeah. I want to see Jared Goff versus his old team, his own team, his old team. 
who sold him down the river and basically has just said, we don't think you're good enough. Sorry, we're taking Matt Stafford. We've had enough. In fact, we're so sick of you, we're going to give the other team a first-round pick so we don't have to pay for you anymore. And, you know, the comments of Michael Brockers, who's now on Detroit with Jared Gaw, I don't know. There's just some, some familiarity within the organizations. Um, that, that's when I look forward to just see the reaction of that game. That is a game where I hope that multiple members of the Rams' defense have microphones on them because I want to hear what Aaron Donald is saying to Jared Goff. Yeah, right, right. I want to hear what Jalen Ramsey <laughs> yeah, is saying too. to Jared Goff. I don't know that it's going to be a very good game, but it will have some drama heading into it. All right, I, I, you're, you're, going to be, you're going to be upset with me for doing this, but, but it, it is an accurate selection. It is game number 272. We don't know what it's going to be yet. It's the last game of the season. That's got to be one of the best games of the season. It's a pre-playoff playoff game more often than not. Whatever that last game of the year is, is going to be one of the best games of the year. Look at that 49ers Seahawks game from a couple of years ago and everything that was riding on it. The Seahawks trying to score at the end. If they do, 49ers aren't the number one seed, probably aren't going to the Super Bowl. So that last game of the year, to end an 18-week season, that that is going to be... Whatever it is, whoever the teams are, it's going to be one of the best games of the year. You are a piece of work. I'll tell you. You are. A, I'm a piece of something. Yeah, you're a pain in my butt is what you are. I Do you what? like it or do you not like I it? I don't like it. Absolutely not. You started off the show being cranky, and now you're ending off the show with a bullcrap third-round pick in the draft. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the hell is wrong with you? Okay, I don't know what – I don't know. There's a lot, so I don't have enough time to dive into that right now. Um all right, I'm stuck between two here. I, I, in the 49ers-Packers Sunday night football game is very intriguing because of all the things that have gone on this offseason. I'm going to do one a little different, though. I'm going to do something like a little just nostalgic, and I, 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 I'm picturing the future of the, this, this cozy day and watching traditional powers. Christmas Day, oh, the Browns and Baker Mayfield – Go to see Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. In the frozen tundra, Christmas Day, Browns, Packers, like old traditional NFL powers. Every, I mean, I don't know. That just screams December holiday football. I'm going to sit my butt on the couch and eat a lot of food all day and watch that game. That that one, just from the, the everything around it, I'm excited for it. Yeah, you know, that that will be a great game. There's two games in all on Christmas this year. It's a Saturday. And I think the NFL has now realized that it can, as long as it can fit within the broader NFL schedule, you've still got two weeks left after Christmas, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I mean, can, can, I think yes, they can find a I way. Can. I, I'm with you. They can find a way. With creative use of buys. Now, do you want to give someone a buy that late in the year so they can play on Wednesday if it's Christmas? I just think Christmas is going to become a thing for the NFL Ugh, where we're going to see every day of the week, with the exception maybe of Wednesday, but I think they can pull it off every other day of the week. I, I would hope so. I mean, you know, we talked about this last year with the pandemic and everything. It, it proved to us it's certainly possible. And, yeah, I mean, the poor schedule maker, he probably has no hair left on his head right now, but that'll just be one thing of more you'd have to worry about. Yeah, you'd have to get creative with the buys like you're talking about and everything that way. Uh, but but I, I, I'm a believer after last season that I know I loved watching – you know, Thursday night, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday night football, the week we had it was was great. It really it changed the week for me. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.